Hello, I'm Dr. Rosh and I'm going to talk today on tear trough and just to talk about a little bit for um, to educate people who do inject but also for clients and patients to understand what to look for, what to ask and anything to watch out for as well. So hopefully uh, you enjoy today's video. A tear trough is an anatomical term and it speaks about the depression that's under the eye. Now that depression can lead to some hollowing the um, appearance of darkness and some people can be bothered by its look and it makes them feel tired, look tired. So it, it talks about an anatomical issue which is a depression just under the eye and most commonly it's from the inner part of the eye to just here and it's a line and you can see it as a deficiency. So tear trough filler uh, can be used to actually plump up this area and give that uh, feeling of rejuvenation, refreshing and just generally make you look less tired. And what it does is you can either use two methods, either a cannula or a needle. If you use a needle, then you put it just under the eye here and you can do some superficial injections to fill the area. If I'm honest, my preference is a cannula and I only use a cannula in the area for safety. And what you do is you make a small introductory, introductory hole here with a very tiny needle and then you use the cannula that goes all the way up that deficiency and you softly layer filler there. A question many people ask me is, is tear trough safe? And it's a difficult one to answer actually. So in my hands and experienced injectors hands, tear trough is incredibly safe. Um, you get mineral bruising, you get no downtime and you get that instant feeling of feeling great and feeling better as you look in the mirror because that tear trough is resolved. However, I do think it's a procedure that's very close to the eye. It's best probably done by medical professionals and um, it, that they can minimise any complications and if you do get complications they can treat it as well right there and then. So people think tear trough is going to hurt because it's right next to the eye and under the eye and actually it doesn't hurt that much at all. If you do it by cannula the main pain is when you do this slight introductory needle but the cannula doesn't hurt. You do feel a little bit of pulling and tugging and sometimes some heaviness associated with the, um, if there's any lidocaine, which is numbing product in the filler product, but in general doesn't hurt at all. It's a very easy procedure that's done and dusted within 10 minutes for refreshed eyes. So tear trough can last a, a, a variety of times, depending on how deep your initial tear trough was. In general, I say it lasts a year, but often the first time you have a tear trough, it's best to top it up in six months, and then it tends to last a year to 18 months. So tear trough at clinic, it costs 395, but if it's deeper and I need to put more filler in, it can go up to 495 or 595. When people look for how to correct the issue of the deficiency under the AI, they look at tear trough filler, they look at um, hollow eyes, under eye bags or under eye filler. And tear trough does correct all those things because there can be a feeling of darkness with that deficiency. If, however, you think it's a pigment issue, the best way to check that is to stretch the skin under your eyes and see if there's a pigment there. If there's pigment there and it's darkening, then that's corrected by probably skincare or laser. Tear trough won't help with that. But if you have a concurrent kind of deficiency there with it, then tear trough will help that and it can often make it seem lighter despite the fact you have slight pigment there. So tear trough absolutely does get rid of um, under eye wrinkles and it makes you look and feel much more refreshed. If you have the little wrinkles just under the middle of the eye, then tear trough won't affect those. Skin care and probably laser are the best things for that. So in general, the risks of tear trough um, are you can get some slight bruising and swelling afterwards. If I'm honest, I don't see it that much, maybe some slight swelling for the first day afterwards, but it's probably not that noticeable. The biggest risk is a little bit of bruising around that introductory needle area. There are millions of vessels in the face and it's impossible to avoid them at all times, but um, I don't find it swells or bruises that much at all, but it's always a risk. Tear trough in the right hands does not make you under eye worse, it always makes it better. I have unfortunately been in a situation where I've had to correct a lot of people's works, and if you put a little bit too much product in, if you put the wrong type of product in, then it can lead to quite a few different issues. One of the biggest issues is something called Tyndall effect, which is a bluish discoloration. And this happens when people use cheap products 
done in a cheap manner and done very superficially under the skin and that can cause a bluish discoloration you end up looking worse the second thing is when people use too thick a filler and it's not homogenized the eye it's not natural so i know we're all price conscious but sometimes by going to a price conscious place they're using a different much cheaper product and it can lead these issues and you can end up looking worse but in the right hands with the right product product done in the right method it, it always makes you look better in general so not everyone has tear trough the majority of us have it um but you do have to have a slight deficiency just under this middle eye area the best way to look is not front on actually so if you look front on and you've got pigment there you can think that you've got a tear trough deficiency the best way to assess it is go into a mirror and turn to the 45 degree angle and have a mirror not just flat a little bit up and have a look at the mirror if you then can see a line here and there's a deficiency there then tear trough will help you can also have a slight line on the lateral side section here of your eye and tear trough can also help that so those are the best candidates for tear trough if however you've not got a line here or you've got any um, current medical acute problems then you're probably not a candidate for tear trough just this time